Welcome back. Here I'm making a generator function called format event, and it yields three things like that. What we are given is a dictionary. Here's our dictionary. We pass that into format event. And then we format various ways. This one I use the dot format that's available to all strings and if you're doing that you want to have curly braces and then I can put two stars so I have keyworded arguments and these are the keywords. Here I'm using the percent %s style and just using the dictionary like that and when I do f I have to name the dictionary over and over again. That's what motivates me to show you these ways with dictionaries. Okay, then we can for loop through them. Once again, I have to tell you, I could have returned a list. But it's good practice. But maybe this one is a little more realistic. We are going to use our packaging tricks so that we get the old lab 140 dot four which is the cards so we get a list of strings each string being a card in our main we're going to enumerate deal cards so we get tuples in each of our fours and it's going to be the index and card index and card and i'm doing that i print the card and i don't go to the new line so that every fifth time i print the new line. So we're getting five cards per hand, or five cards per line. Okay, let's look at our deal card. Our deal card is indeed a generator because there's a yield. I get some cards, I shuffle them up, and I yield them one at a time. Okay, let's take a look at the third one. This one I think is more realistic. In my main, I'm going to drive first lines. Is that odd? That's common to be sure that the name main is your driving function, even if it calls another driver. For me, that's important because for my debugging process, where I use a Python debugger, I need to call a starting function. So it's very helpful that it's always main. Okay, drive first lines is what happens. So drive first lines looks for arguments on the command line. If there are none, then the length of sys or v is one, just the name of the command. And then we're going to say that we're going to start here, this directory. Otherwise, we're going to collect all the starting dirs well, where, where we will do this by collecting the strings in the list from number one on. Then with each of the starting durs, I am going to call first lines of starting dir. That makes our generator function object. We expect it to yield for us a path and a first line. Let's go look at that one. Here I'm walking that starting dir. I get that tuple that we have always gotten from os.walk. The first time I go through my os.walk tuple is when this dir is equal to the start dir, and at that point I want to sort my dir names so that the next time I go through this loop, this dir will then respond to the order of the dir names. Otherwise, I'm going to sort up the file names, just the file names are not interested in the dir names except the order, which we just fixed up. I calculate my whole path, I open it, I'm going to call next on the file object. Now then, if next does not find the first line, then there is a default I can give it and it's going to be can't read it. And you'll see that that has come out. The other thing that can happen here is that I get a Unicode decode error. And so then my first line will be Unicode error, and we'll see that. Otherwise, I'm going to yield the path on the first line. That comes back here, 
and I give that report. So that's a nice example of separating these two jobs, one from the other. Very nice. Okay, and here we see that we did get a Unicode error in our .ds store. Can't read it and log dot out, and the others gave me a first line, and there's a whole lot more. To look at the fourth one, which is quite a thing, but very interesting, I like this piece of code a lot, we want to first look back at our dot dice.py module that is in Lab 80 Libraries. And here it is. Looking at the output, we see that it tells us what got rolled, a 5 and a 6, and what they add to. But if they are doubles, like the 6 and 6, then we get the gambler language, boxcars. And here we have snake eyes. So if we want to test this again two years from now, we don't want to have to study it carefully and figure out what we have to do to test it. And you have to test it by hand because it's not tested until all the doubles have come out of it. So we're going to use exec and a generator to, in fact, make it automatic that we get just doubles so that the output is always the same and we can check it. We will not change dice.py at all. You remember that dice.py goes around and around, and if you are ready to roll, then we will roll a pair of dice and give a report reporting the doubles if they are there. Here we are back at 310 underscore 4. Our main calls test roll them and nothing else. In test roll them, we make a global declaration of doubles generator object. We have not yet made a globals generator object. We are now making the identifier and put it in the global space. But also, we have access to it because we have the global. So now it sits out in the global space even though it is invisible. Now dice code is going to be equal to get dice code string. Let's go and look at that. Here is where we're going to find our dice.py module. That'll be my file path. I open it and I read it. Now my dice code is a big string, executable as we saw. So instead of my two calls to random rand range, which are indeterminate, I'm going to say next of my doubles generator object. So I'm going to make a doubles generator object. And every time, instead of random rand range, I'm going to get the next yield from my doubles generator object. I'm going to trim off this code at def main because when I execute it, I don't want that main to execute. And then I'm going to return as a string the dice code. Let's look at our role determined dice generator function that will make the generator object when we call it in a for loop. And here we have the range from 1 through and including 6. And we're going to yield 1 twice, then 2 twice. So each next is going to get another one of these die. Here is my doubles generator object. It is what is returned for my rolled determined dice. And that is exactly the generator object that's going to be yielding one die with every next when the dice code is executed. So here I am. I'm going to execute the dice code. And now I'm going to do this call for roll in range 6, print roll of that roll. When I was in Python 2, this worked. I could do this. But now, each exec has its own namespace. So I had to do it this way. A very subtle difference between Python 2 and Python 3. Worth knowing if you're moving from 2 to 3. Okay, that's it. Then every time I run this, and test that old code, which might get changed that's back there in lab 080. 
I will be still testing whatever's there, and this should be the output, everything else not changing, that matters. And this is something that invites unit testing, which we'll do after we learn a little about object-oriented. Okay, now you know about generators, another buzzword for Python, and I'll see you in the next lab when we're finally going to learn about classes, object-oriented programming. I look forward to that. See you there.